Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So yes, I did get up very early today, all prepared to fertilize my lawn for the first time in several months. In fact, today is October 1st and it ends my fertilizer ban here in Florida. I've talked about this before, but here in a lot of places in Florida, we actually have fertilizer bans that span June, July, August, and September where you cannot apply nitrogen or phosphorus fertilizers to your lawn. If you want to read more about it, I'll link to one of the ordinances here, but it's basically something to do with runoff and red tide and the fact that in the summer our rainy season we get super hard thunderstorms that just crash in lots of rain in like 15 minutes and if, and if somebody had applied fertilizer to their lawn especially granular fertilizers around the time of one of those storms or even a day or two before that can wash everything out which hits our lakes our rivers streams ends up in the gulf and that can contribute to red tide and other problems and imbalances in the ecosystem either way today marks the end of the ban so i can go ahead and throw her down anytime i want now all the way until next year on may 31st now this video isn't about that so i don't know if you can tell but i'm actually probably not going to be able to throw down today because of this wind. I am doing some liquids and some granulars. Granulars you could probably do in the wind, but it's just not fun and I don't like doing that. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna get to throw down today. But the good news is all that's okay because I hadn't really planned to show you all that anyway. I just wanna actually wait a week or 10 days or so so I can give you a full like before and after so you can actually see how everything goes. But I did wanna show you this. Check out my lawn from back in the spring when I was still able to throw down. You can see how dark green blue it is and compare it to right now. Now you would think, oh Alan, your lawn looks great and it does look good, but it's been without any nitrogen or phosphorus mostly nitrogen for the last four months and the color is just really really different so all that to say is i am going to throw down here now that my ban is over and i'll get you guys a video out in the next week to 10 days showing you the before and after of that and telling you everything i threw down and why because i'm going to do different strategies in all parts of the lawn because that's always fun to do but the real reason i wanted to come to you today is to show you the results of something that uh i did i don't know we'll call it maybe a counter experiment Maybe something I did to show you what glyphosate can and can't do to different types of grass and weeds and that kind of stuff. And this stems from whenever I do a Pro Vista video, which I'll link in the description below to my recent Scott's St. Augustine Pro Vista video that I kind of show you some things about that variety of St. Augustine grass. But then I always get these counter arguments or people saying, okay, but what does glyphosate do to that? Because you say it's a glyphosate resistant grass. What does glyphosate do to that? So I'm gonna show you. So real quick, this isn't sponsored by Bethel Farms or Scott's Pro Vista St. Augustine grass or any of that. This is just some extra content that I was able to create to answer some questions that you guys have. Now, if you don't know what Scott's Pro Vista is, it is a St. Augustine grass that has been bred to be glyphosate tolerant. Now they've bred it to do other things too. It's darker green color, it grows really slow, all of that. But the glyphosate resistance or the glyphosate tolerance is the one that everybody always asks about. By the way, they also have a Kentucky bluegrass that is available now or definitely gonna be available next spring probably mostly in sod, but that will also be available. It's also glyphosate tolerant. I'll link the description below to their website. You guys can go and blow them up. I'm sure the guys at the Scotts Company would love it if all of you guys up north emailed them telling you you want their sod. Okay, so what you're seeing right here, this is a spot that I sprayed. Let's move this little fella out. So a couple things here. The first is this is HDX. This is Home Depot's brand of 41% glyphosate. I don't see it on shelves anymore and I've had this bottle for quite a while. So I'm thinking they may have discontinued it due to mounting pressure in the media over glyphosate. And just in case you don't know, Glyphosate is the active ingredient in the old school Roundup that everybody used to spray in their crack and crevice to kill weeds in their beds and cracks and all that kind of stuff. But you can make your own and it will be much stronger than Roundup and 41% is the highest concentration available. So I mixed up a squirt bottle here. So I'm gonna take it out and spray it in a couple areas and show you the result. This is Floritam St. Augustine grass with a lot of wild Bermuda mixed in. But uh, the thing about it is I sprayed this with glyphosate a little over a week ago and you can see it's dead as a hammer. Just listen to this crisp. Now, the more astute among you are thinking, Al, of course, bro, you spray glyphosate on your grass, you're gonna kill it, right? And I agree, that's pretty obvious, right? But what happens is, Okay, now here we are in the back lawn, and you're gonna see a similar spot here, and you're probably gonna say, okay, Al, what's this? Well, go back and review the video that I put up, but this is the Scott's Pro Vista St. Augustine grass, and you can see this is a dead spot, but this wasn't killed with glyphosate, it was killed with something else, you can check out that video. But what I wanted to show you was, because people always say, okay, Alan, but is it really glyphosate tolerant? Can I spray the glyphosate on it? So you see this beautiful green spot right here with zero damage at all from any kind of herbicide or anything like that? 
Look at this from a little over a week ago. With zero damage at all from any kind of herbicide or anything like that. Now let's come over here to this spot. What this is here. Okay, so this is an area that I left uncut. Not necessarily for purposes of this video, even though I could say that and get away with it. No, I actually just got lazy and forgot to mow over here. So uh, anyway, but what's interesting is I have some day flower right here. And so we're gonna go ahead and spray this with the glyphosate. And again, this is the Provista St. Augustine grass right here. You can see it here. By the way, if you wanna see what it looks like after three weeks growth, here, here's a good quick, you'll sort of be able to tell, a lot of day flower in here, but. So this was mowed two days ago, a little bit, a tiny bit of growth. And then here's what it was like before I mowed it. And this is three weeks worth of growth. Now there's a lot of stuff in here, but you can see the three weeks worth of growth, not that big. But there's a lot of stuff in here. Here's some wild Bermuda that came in. I guess it was good I didn't mow this. It makes a nice little test page for you guys over by there. So uh, there you go. So there's some wild Bermuda. The main thing we're going to go after here is this day flower. I mean, look at it. It's just taken over. It does have a beautiful purple flower, though. It's a shame we have to call it a weed. Look at that. Pretty. Look at those stamens sticking out there. But in my lawn considered a weed so let's go ahead and spray this and we'll show you guys what does and doesn't happen now the grass is really wet too but that's just you know welcome to Florida also I need to do something with this palm I'm not gonna spray too close to this palm just so you guys know that's one of those things I'm gonna have to put a mulch ring or something around that so I'm gonna keep this over there Okay, I think that app was heavy enough to illustrate that this is going to kill the weeds and not the lawn. So, we will come back. Now you can see this spot. And what the first thing you should look at here is this is wild Bermuda that was sprayed. And you can see that it is dead. That's wild Bermuda that came in. And uh, it's all dead throughout of here. The, the challenge I found with spraying the wild Bermuda is that the blades are so wispy it's really hard to get good coverage on them you really have to have a really good mist in your spray in order to get good coverage on it just because the the blade leaf blade surface is so small in this plant it's harder to stick to but you can see on the day flower i would say that glyphosate does not do very well on day flower it definitely damaged it knocked it back but you know sure it's coming out of here well it's coming out of here pretty darn good it's just weird. It doesn't zorch it out maybe like you would expect. Look at that. So I'm going to say that glyphosate is probably not the best thing for dayflower, even though this is all coming out of here like it's dead, peeling right out. And just to show you, here's an area of dayflower. I need to, you know, dress up around this palm better. Here's some dayflower, and you'll see it doesn't pull out quite as easy. See, it kind of holds better. So yeah, maybe so. Maybe the Maybe the glyphosate does work on the day flower. But the main reason I wanted to show you this was, again, here's more of that wild Bermuda that was creeping in here. And you can see it's all dead. And around it is, is Pro Vista that's undamaged. So that just proves the glyphosate tolerance right there. We have dead Bermuda in the middle of a nice undamaged plot here of beautiful Scott's Pro Vista. And then day flower that I'm not necessarily sure if, well, yeah, I'd say it looks pretty dead. So maybe glyphosate is good on day flower too. But let me show you some things glyphosate is not good on. All right, so here's dove weed that was sprayed with glyphosate. And you can see it kind of looks a little shriveled up. It kind of looks maybe like it's slightly damaged, but it is definitely not killed.
it is definitely not killed. So this is one of those things, you know, glyphosate is not a be-all end-all. It doesn't kill everything. And one of the things that it doesn't really kill is doveweed. One other thing I did want to show you here is up here in the front, by the way, those of you saw last week's video, blowout's still there, haven't cleaned it up yet. I'm pretty sure that is a mole. But look, somebody, one of you guys mentioned that he's checking out the perimeter and you can see the blowout kind of goes along the edge here. So that's what I wonder. I wonder if he's burrowing down through here. See that? But that's why I'm here, because this is some Scott's Pro Vista. This is my parkway, I ignore it. I never fertilize it. It only gets humic acid and uh, hydrotain, that's it. But this here, this is dead torpedo grass inside of Pro Vista. So the torpedo had come and taken over this entire corner right here. right here and now it's dead now it's been cut so I'll show you some pictures that I took just before it was cut but definitely the torpedo grass is dead from the glyphosate now we'll see how long that holds or how long it takes this to come back but the rhizomes do seem to be pretty dead all the way down so it, it definitely penetrated pretty hard I, I was a little heavy-handed here though and you'll see the provista is not damaged not at all see So there you go guys, thanks for watching. Kind of a little different video, but definitely something different to look at and a little experiment to have a little fun with. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week and that you get to enjoy some weeknight lawn work here. Got plenty more content coming up all year because we're year round down here in Florida, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the lawn.